the preparations for the upcoming elections in Somalia, scheduled for 2016, are hampered by the continuing rampant violence making the country unprepared for general elections. The Al-Qaeda-linked militant group Al-Shabaab continues to wage a brutal insurrection against Somalia's government as it carries out deadly attacks against African Union troops, civilians and politicians alike. As a result, the Somali government has announced it will not hold general elections, saying it's more likely to find an alternative to a general election, such as holding a vote for regional leaders. But Somalia has not always struggled with poor governance. The beginning period of the Barre government is considered to be one of the most successful governing periods in African history. It was referred to as the Ka'an, meaning revolutionary. So what lessons can be drawn from that period? This documentary will provide an exclusive insight into Somalia's longest serving government, chronicling its heights of success and its ultimate demise, the Ka'an regime led by Mohammed Siyad Bakri. It was a beautiful country. Mogadishu was a fantastic, uh, but very beautiful, and you could swim there, and we swam. And, and I was very happy there, I loved it. It was a really very mellow country. Siad Barre's government came into power in October 1969 through a bloodless coup organized and executed by the armed forces, which was then headed by Barre himself. Ahmed Suleiman Abdullah Dafle was the director of Somalia's first national security service for 13 years and one of the key figures that orchestrated the coup. The military government succeeded in ensuring safety and security remained whilst the transition of government was happening, something very rare during times of a coup d'etat. This coup was welcomed by the public. Ambassador William Fullerton, who was the then British ambassador to Somalia, relates the peculiar safety he felt whilst stationed there. Well, we felt very safe in Mogadishu. We, we walked about and we went shopping um, and we drove about the country. Um, I usually had a police escort, but that was usually if I was going up by Ogaden, by that sort of region up to the north, to, to towards Djibouti. Uh, but one went to Kisimayo and Brava and all these places uh, without any difficulty, stayed in little rest houses, uh, so it didn't impinge very much. There wasn't a feeling of tension, watch out, something's going to happen, we should be nervous. I didn't get that impression at the time. So, I mean, we heard more of burglaries and difficulties in Nairobi at the time than we seem to have in Mogadishu. security, the military government succeeded in creating a standard national writing system, selecting a modified Latin script as the nation's orthography in 1972. In the same year, 
all government employees were ordered to learn to read and write Somali within six months. The purpose here was to decrease the growing rift between those who spoke the colonial languages and those who didn't. Many of the high-ranking positions in the former government were given to people who spoke either Italian or English. The military government adopted scientific socialism as a method of governance, which meant that major industries were nationalized, but it also meant that there was a focused priority on public development, resulting in the introduction of several public projects, such as the eradication of clanism and the literacy campaigns. Abdurrahman Mohamed Abtidon was one of the young secondary school students who was enlisted to lift the literacy levels of rural Somalis, a project that resulted in Somalia being awarded the UNESCO Prize for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Literacy. ولكن هناك اشياء اخرى في المنطقه التي تتمكن من 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 المنطقه أنا أعيد كودي أوجس كوني سجال بقلي أفرت تضابطن كي أي كون يتضابط بقلي أفرتن أرضي وحي كنا قاقين تريبونكا يقول هذا يقبل هذا. Many songs of encouragement were played on the radio as part of the public development projects to evoke public sentiment. الرادي حق تجيسته هي سه جوبا بده لقي قاضي. أردبي بحد باديها تبو بربد باتهين عذر بحد وين باب إنيا وحكوا قلة قيرة عاد سلاذ هاي وحد كم تهاي دتك أي تاريخ الأسود. Tula Sheikh Ahmed Gabale was the deputy chair of Somali Women's Democratic Organization during the military government. She too relates the milestones that were achieved to develop the country and its people. لكن وحكوس على رنتي نبهر مر لا يكوس على حلقة كعنك إذا ماذا قلب كسر قبله كقيب جلاية وحن له عند قاتير وحن له سراكين إذا ماذا قلب كسر كم وحن له وزير وحن له قبل أجهزة ميال جودة وحن له بيلا ضيارة دكعية وميج كدولة أو ماركتي وحكة جلا حولها إذا ماذا عرك وحكة جلا الله كل إذا وحلا أنك شقين جرنا كم ذا بقام ذا هرادجة ناوع كل قنكرة قبلها سيد جنين كفر عون يا أوكلاتات ما إذا أنا معركة جنين كفر عون أنا بقول ليه حسوس أنا هو اللي كان بقولي أنا قاعد أسكت سوق هذا شن سنة جرمركي لي بجدي إلا هدرت أنا حوق بعض مالنتي أنا ما أنتها. But these same policies, underpinned by nationalism and longing for the unification of all Somalis, saw the offspring of the demise of the Somali state. In July 1977, the military government sought to incorporate the various Somali inhabited territories of the region into a greater Somalia. The Somali National Army invaded the Ogaden region, a largely Somali ethnic populated region in Ethiopia. They were successful at first, capturing most of the territory. And all the way beyond Jijiga. Jijiga is up over the pass and in, inside Ethiopia. 
and even we got to the outskirts of Dinidawa. Um, uh, uh, right, that's a deep, deep into e Ethiopia. Uh, the front line moved very conventionally forward. The, the Ethiopians offered very little resistance. But the invasion reached an abrupt end when the Soviet Union, a long-time ally of Somalia, shifted its support to Ethiopia. The Soviets halted their previous supplies to the Barre regime and increased the distribution of aid, weapons and training to the Ethiopian government. They also brought in around 15,000 Cuban troops to assist the Ethiopian regime. By 1978, the Somali troops were pushed out of the Ogaden. Abdullahi Abdullah Dohre was one of the soldiers who became a prisoner of war. <laughs> The Ogaden War had a devastating economic impact on the country. A massive influx of refugees fleeing from now war-torn Ogaden descended onto Somalia, putting more strain on a spent economy. There was a nationwide commodity shortage and prices skyrocketed. Ordinary workers were finding it increasingly difficult to afford basic means to live, as Mohammed Abdi Yusuf, the Deputy Minister of General Affairs and Housing, explains. <laughs> Because Public discontent and disillusionment grew. The government became increasingly totalitarian, and soon, clan based opposition groups supported by the Ethiopian government began to form. By the 1980s, numerous opposition movements were established. The military government responded by ordering punitive measures against these groups and those perceived to be supporting them locally. In the northern regions, where opposition group the Somali National Movement was based, a clampdown that included the bombing of the city of Hargeisa were ordered and carried out. These government approaches caused and exasperated the actions of the opposition movements. Asair Abdulqadir Farah was one of the founding members of the Somali National Movement. He explains the reasons that encouraged them to set up the movement. The growing number of opposition groups combined with a flailing economy and a disheartened public marked the end of the military government. Opposition groups managed to overthrow the government in 1991, resulting into the Somali civil war. Here's John Snow again. Well, I'm afraid, and I don't like having to say this, I think it was, in the end, the overthrow of Siad Bari. 
I think if he, he or some other strong man had continued, I think a lot of what then went wrong would have been kept down. Um, I don't like saying that, but I think it's true that if, if, if a strong man had sustained uh, in Somalia, a lot of this would not have happened. The latter period of the Somali military government became synonymous with totalitarianism and oppression, but the good years preceding it hold many lessons that can be drawn to inform the upcoming 2016 elections. Lessons such as upholding good governance and security, eradicating clanism and illiteracy, and the fostering of a common national bond. Can they find a return in Somalia? Ahmed Suleiman Abdullah Dafle suggests justice, honesty, and constructive efforts should be at the root of all political endeavors if Somalia is to be successfully rebuilt. <laughs> Somalia.